The Komodo dragon, also known as the Komodo monitor, is a species of large monitor lizard endemic to the Indonesian islands of Komodo, Rinka, Flores and Gili Motang. As the largest lizard in the world's fauna, the Komodo dragon has historically become an object of great scientific interest. Unfortunately, over time, many misconceptions have appeared regarding the ecology and behavior of this animal. Here I will try to refute some of the most popular ones. Komodo dragon feeding ecology has been the subject of much misconceptions. When Komodo dragons were first discovered, they were considered formidable predators in their habitat. However, they were later quickly downgraded to obligate scavenger, possibly due to general incredulity in fact that a large reptile can actively hunt mammals. The belief that the Komodo dragon is a scavenger or mostly scavenger persisted until Dr. Walter Offenberg spent about 13 months in the wild with Komodo dragons. As a result of his observations, this myth was officially debunked. The Komodo dragon is an opportunistic predator, foraging mainly through active hunting on large mammals. Komodo dragons are surprisingly agile, allowing them to dodge prey counterattacks. Very important for large ectothermic predators, Komodo dragons are also ambush predators, and like most smaller monitor lizards, and compensate for their low top speed with their ability to accelerate very quickly. This makes the Komodo dragon a very effective predator, about 70% of its attacks on wild boars and deer are successful. Attacks by large and experienced individuals on buffaloes are also mostly successful according to Offenberg. However, the old myth was replaced by a new one, which still holds a position in documentaries. This new myth is the myth about a chemically boosted bite. Anecdotal data on complications following Komodo dragon bites were at first explained by the potential existence of pathogenic bacteria unique to the lizardous oral flora. The origin of this idea dates back to folk myths, however, Affenberg is often misquoted as the originator of it. In his monumental study, he reports the presence of Staphylococcus, Providencia, Proteus morgani and Proteus mirabilis in samples from the saliva of two freshly captured Komodo dragons. Though Offenberg concludes that Proteus-dominated infection could be responsible for the consequences of some of the recorded bites, he himself concludes that the infectious feature of a Komodo monitor bite is a folk myth. More recent research has confirmed these findings. This idea was definitively discarded, since oral flora of Komodo dragons turned out to be not at all dissimilar from that of any other carnivorous animal. Further it has been claimed that Komodo dragons have a venomous bite. In 2009 a group of scientists led by Brian Fry published evidence demonstrating that there are two glands in the lower jaw of Komodo dragon, which secrete several toxic proteins. Although this discovery is often interpreted as a deadly addition to pathogenic bacteria in some deceitful documentaries, the biological significance of Komodo dragon's toxic proteins is disputed. Despite the fact that the publication was titled Central Role for Venom in Predation by the Komodo Dragon and the Giant Extinct Megalinia, the evidence provided for the involvement of venom directly in the predatory activity of the Komodo dragon was frankly weak and was rejected by most scientists, including Daniel Bennett, Kevin Arbuckle and Kurt Schwenk. The main arguments of Fry and co-authors in support of their hypothesis were the amount and toxicity of the venom of Komodo dragons. The mandibular venom gland of a 1 meter 60 centimeters long Komodo monitor has enough fluid to produce 150 milligrams of venom, 30 milligrams of which would be available for delivery. Based on this, it is expected that the venom gland of an average male Komodo dragon about 2.5 meters long will produce about 572 milligrams of venom, 114 milligrams of which would be available for delivery. According to the authors who tested the Komodo dragon's venom on laboratory mice, it takes one-tenth of a milligram of venom per kilogram of prey body mass to cause pronounced hypotension, and four-tenths of a milligram of venom per kilogram of prey body mass to cause hypotensive collapse. Based on this data, it appears that the average male Komodo dragon has enough venom to immobilize an adult wild boar or deer and disorient an adult water buffalo. 
However, unlike venomous snakes and helodermatid lizards, the venom of Komodo dragon does not travel through any grooves in the teeth. Thus, only a small amount of the venom can enter the prey's bloodstream. In addition, the secret of toxic glands becomes highly diluted in the dragon's saliva and the prey's blood, which makes it very difficult for venom to enter the bloodstream through the wound. Given that the synthesis of toxins consumes a lot of energy in venomous reptiles, the injection of venom through the saliva seems evolutionarily impractical. Especially considering that the Komodo monitors do not hold the prey in a crocodilian manner, but inflict quick cutting bites. Thus, the venom of the Komodo dragon is most likely not involved in the predation, and has some other biological functions. Recent studies have shown that many Australian monitor lizards, as well as crocodile monitor, Bayek tree monitor, white-throated monitor and possibly all other species of monitor lizards, have a similar structure of the mandibular glands and secrete a similar toxin, despite the fact that only the Komodo dragon regularly hunts prey larger than itself, and only a few species regularly feed on relatively large mammals. This indicates that the Komodo dragon's venom is likely to have functions shared with all or most species of monitor lizards, such as being involved in digestion process. Based on this, it seems obvious how unfounded the popular myth of the Komodo dragon as a bite and release predator, which is still actively disseminated in some deceitful documentaries. There has never been a recorded case of a Komodo dragon using this bite and release killing strategy. Despite spending over a year living with Komodo dragons, Offenberg never once found an animal bitten, released and then tracked down after it died. Komodo dragon attacks were quite the opposite in fact. Small to relatively loud prey such as goats and wild boars are often killed on the spot using violent side-to-side -side shaking in the manner of dogs, while larger animals such as buffaloes and large deer are hamstringed by knife-like zifidont teeth, followed by abdominal evisceration of the now paralyzed and often still alive prey. Despite the gruesome detail in which Affenberg described Komodo dragon attacks, as well as the sheer lack of evidence for a viper-style feeding strategy, one can still read about how Komodo dragons avoid confrontation with their prey by allegedly employing bite and release method of killing. Almost the only actual evidence on which this myth is based is the unique footage taken by BBC Command while trying to shoot the Komodo dragon hunting a buffalo. But such sensational reports of buffalo dying after Komodo dragon bite are not only exaggerations about the frequency of what is a rare event, but they are also a fundamental misreading of scenario with recent anthropogenic origins. Water buffalo were introduced to the islands only 300 years ago by Dutch settlers. In their native environment water buffalo frequent vast marshes, whilst on the islands of Komodo and Rinke, which they share with Komodo dragons, the only available water sources are stagnant rocky pools measuring only 5 to 10 meters across. Komodo dragon attacks upon water buffalo are often unsuccessful, because only large males are able to kill such large prey. However, subsequent to seeking refuge in watering holes filled with their own sewage, water buffalo may become infected with pathogenic bacteria that ultimately cause fatal sepsis. This scenario, in which Komodo dragon attacks and buffalo deaths are temporally, but not causally, connected, compounded by the observation of Komodo dragon scavenging on the carcasses of dead buffalo, has likely led to a bite and release misinterpretation of the predatory behavior of the Komodo dragon. But, the Komodo monitor lizard appears to be a very formidable predator for its size, capable of killing a buffalo up to 15 times its own weight, by doing it on the spot and without using any secret weapon in the saliva. Despite this, the Komodo monitor is often underrated, especially in comparison with carnivorous mammals, as well as other carnivorous reptiles such as crocodiles and pythons. One of the reasons for this is the misconception that the Komodo dragon is an example of island gigantism and the result of island evolution. It is now known that the Komodo dragon evolved in Australia, alongside two larger species of varanid lizard, and subsequently radiated into Indonesia. Dramatic lowering of sea level during the last glacial period uncovered extensive stretches of continental shelf that the Komodo dragon colonized, becoming isolated in their present island range as sea levels rose afterwards. In fact, as a species, the Komodo dragon is older than its giant extinct relative, Megalania, since its oldest Australian fossils date back almost 4 million years ago. Fossilized remains of Pleistocene Komodo dragons have been found on Java, and fossils of extinct Pliocene species of the giant monitor lizard, close in size to the Komodo dragon, 
have been found in mainland Asia as well, indicating that they fared well in environments containing competition, such as mammalian carnivores, until the climate change and extinction events that marked the beginning of the Pleistocene. Thus, the Komodo dragon has no secret weapon in its saliva, is not an example of island gigantism, and is not a unique, bite and release, predator. But despite the fact that the Komodo monitor turned out to be simpler, it is still a unique species, representing the remains of an Australian megafauna. It is also a very successful predator that was able to survive in low productive ecosystems of small islands even before the introduction of large ungulates by humans. The Komodo dragon has many interesting anatomical and physiological features that will be discussed in my next videos.